Hello there. Today we'll be talking about view models, what they are, how to use them, how to implement them in your apps, and what common problems they help us solve. Um, so first, uh, let's take a look here at the documentation. Essentially, a view model uh, is a class that helps us store the business logic and screen level state. So the state of a particular screen, any variables, any values that we need to save that that screen is dependent upon uh, to display uh, certain components in the, in the UI. Uh, we want to store them in the view model and also any business logic. Um, why would we do this? Well, essentially, whenever you rotate your, your device uh, or your device goes through any configuration changes, uh, the data for that UI gets reset to its original state. So we need a separate object to hold that state in order to, so that it persists any configuration changes. Additionally, by moving our business logic over to the view model, we're able to separate our concerns and let our fragment or activity focus on the UI components. And uh, that makes our code a lot easier to read and maintain. So let's take a look at this. Uh, I have a pretty simple app here. It has just two screens, a product detail fragment and a shopping cart fragment. Um, if I, here I can um, add some delicious hazelnut cupcakes into my cart and I can check out and go to my checkout screen. I can go back. Uh, if I add, let's say another hazelnut cupcake, let's actually add a few more. I'm gonna add 12 of those. And uh, so I'm very hungry. So let's flip, uh, rotate our screen and you can see that our checkout button is reset back to zero. So, um, and if I do this again and rotate my screen again, our, the state of my, uh, my order uh, total is reset back to zero. So let's say, you know, if this was uh, an actual production app and I'm going to check out, it looks like in my shopping cart, I have uh, an order of zero dollars, even though I actually meant to order 12 cupcakes. <clears throat> so let's fix this. You know, let's walk through the code real quick. Um, so here in our product detail fragment, I, uh, we, I've decided that our hazelnut cupcakes are worth $5 each. And then um, our order starts at $0. So we use this order total string in a couple of places. So our checkout button text uh, essentially just says our order total string of $0 plus the word checkout. Whenever we click the add to cart button, this... Um, order total string gets, uh, we calculate the, the total of the order using this method here, which essentially just takes our, the quantity from the quantity field, and then it multiplies it by the product price. And then here we just assign that to, to the order total again, and then we just uh, update the, the text here on the checkout button. Um, Additionally, once we click on the checkout button, we navigate over to our shopping cart fragment and we pass the order total string over to the shopping cart fragment. So over on the shopping cart fragment, uh, essentially we get our order total from the bundle and uh, we display it here in this um, order total amount uh, text view. We have um, a static text view here that says like, thank you for your order and your, your total order is $5. So, uh, and then if we click on this edit, uh, edit order button, this takes us back to our um, product detail fragment. So let's update this by adding, let's implement a view model. So to do this first, we want to go to our app build.gradle file. So the one within the app, not the project one. And I'm going to add a new dependency implementation. And I'm going to look for uh, this 
this uh, view model from the lifecycle uh, library. And make sure you sync your project. Okay, so now we are ready to implement our view model. Uh, so I'm going to add a view model to the product details fragment. And I'm actually going to go here to my checkout example package, add a new Kotlin file class. I'm going to call it product detail view model. This class needs to extend the view model class. And we can just import that there. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to my product detail fragment and I'm going to actually link my view model uh, real quick. So private leading it variable view model and it's going to be of type product detail view model. And I'm going to create an instance of it right inside our onCreate view. Okay, and I'm going to get an instance from the view model provider. And then I'm going to tell the view model provider that the owner, the lifecycle owner of this uh, should be our product detail fragment. And from there, we want to tell it the class of view model that uh, it should be creating. And it's going to be my uh, product detail view model class.java. Okay, so now we have an instance of our view model and then uh, we can begin using it. So what are some things we can probably move over to the view model? So I would say the product price, the order total string, uh, those things can be persisted in the view model. And it looks like here we're doing a calculation which should uh, can easily be handled over in the view model. So let's actually move those things over. So everything's red and complaining. So how can we uh, how can we fix this? So here I'm going to say that my checkout button text is going to get updated from the property that now lives in the view model. Uh, it's telling me that it can't access it because it's a private property. So I'm going to expose this property here. I'm making it public. And then um, this calculation I'm going to fix in a moment in a different way. And then same with uh, this checkout button text. Now it's going to get the property from the view model. As far as this order total string getting calculated here, this we're actually going to move that responsibility over to the view model. And we're going to say, hey, view model, um, whenever I click on the add to cart button, you're going to uh, execute a method called on add button clicked. Right, and this method is going to know everything that it needs to know in order to update the order total. So let's go over here to our view model. This method can essentially stay private because we're uh, going to only be calling it inside of the view model here. So I'm going to create another public method. This one's going to be the on uh, add button clicked. And here we're going to um, calculate our order total. In order to calculate this order total, we need to know the order quantity, which here we're getting from the quantity text, uh, text field. This is part of the UI. So we're actually going to move this back to our um, product detail fragment and we're going to put it just right up here above at the top of our add to cart button. So order quantity and we actually don't need to call binding again because we're calling it up here. 
So our quantity number uh, text text field is going to um, we're going to get the string the text from that uh, field converted to an integer, and then we're going to let's pass that over to our um, view model method here, and then now we're going to need to update this method to say that it needs um, the order let's say quantity which is an integer and that is going to get passed down to our calculator order total uh, with our quantity which is also an integer and then here instead of using the order total quantity that we were using before we'll just use the quantity that we're passing in multiply that by the product price um, now this, all this is doing is returning an integer, but we're not really using uh, that here. So we can assign that value over to our order total string. So now this on add button clicked is updating our order total string. And oh. Looks like we're still missing this view model down here. All right, so looks like we're good. Let's run our app and see how we did. Okay, so now if I add an upkick to the cart, my total is $5. If I rotate my screen, We can see that the checkout button is still says five dollars and i can add more here 12 i can add make my total 60 dollars if i rotate my screen again it's still 60 dollars and then when i check out i have the correct amount uh here in my um shopping cart so now let's add a view model to the shopping cart and i'm going to go over to our new Kotlin class shopping cart view model again we're going to extend the view model class and the shopping cart fragment is a little bit different because it's getting the order total from the bundle it'd be great if, it, if we had this value right at the beginning when we create our view model uh, in order for us to use it in the rest of the code. So I'm actually going to add that to the constructor of our shopping cart. Make it a private value order total. That is an integer. And now we can link our uh, view model over to our fragment. So let's go do th the exact same steps we did before. Private lead in it var view model. And this is going to be our shopping cart view model. Then inside our onCreate view, view model, set that equal to view model provider. Our shopping cart fragment is the lifecycle owner, and we want to create a, a shopping cart view model class. Now we can use the order total that we passed in here in the order total amount. So this total from the view model and it's going to tell me, yeah, because it's private. So we actually, let's make this a public um, property and now we can get the order total from the view model. Um, and let's run our app and see how this, how this works. Okay, so I'm going to add Cupcake to my cart, hit checkout, and oh, something happened. Hmm, I wonder what could have gone wrong. Let's look here and see what we find in our logs. And this is telling us that our shopping cart view model has no zero argument constructor. Now, what that means is that our regular view model class essentially is meant to be used for um, 
view models that don't have any arguments being passed in. However, since we're passing an argument here, we need to use a different strategy. So we're going to actually create our own view model factory. So I'm going to create another class. This one's going to be called shopping cart view model factory. And then here, <clears throat> also going to pass in the same uh, private value order total. And this is going to be an integer. And then we now want to extend view model provider factory. Now, in order to create our view model, we can uh, override this um, create method from the view model provider. And then here, uh, one way of doing this, or this is the, the way that I originally learned how to create view models, is you do uh, an if statement and you check whether the model class that you're wanting to create is assignable from the shopping cart view model class. And then if it is, then just return an instance of this shopping cart view model with, of course, the parameter uh, that you're given, the order total, and as this type. And then um, if not, then we can throw an illegal argument exception. And then here we can say unknown view model. Great. This is this works perfectly fine. Um, the only thing is you get this unchecked uh, cast warning and um, you could do something like this where you say um, suppress uh, unchecked cast and that gets rid of the warning. However, I recently found a pretty neat solution from a um, post on Medium that I'll link down in the description. It's, it's great. So we can here essentially we can return we take the model class, we say get constructor, and we tell it the type of argument that we need here. So we need an integer class.java. And then here we want a new instance uh, with the order total. One liner and nice and clean and it works uh, perfectly. So now let's go back to our um, shopping cart fragment. And so we have our view model up here. Now we want to create uh, our view model factory. So private data net var view model factory. And it's going to be uh, of type the shopping cart view model factory. Then down here, I'm actually going to put the view model factory above my view model uh, instance that I'm creating here. You'll see why in a moment. So here we're going to need to create our view model factory. It's going to be of type shopping cart view model factory. And this needs the order total, which previously we were getting down here from the shopping cart uh, from the bundle. So let's actually move that up there. And now we can pass that in to our factory order total. And then now here in our view model provider, we just tell it um, that uh, the custom factory, we tell them about the custom factory we just made, view model factory. And um, when we run our app, now I can add my cupcakes here, $60. And now I can check out and I've got my the correct order amount uh, and it works just fine. So now let's actually do something fun here with our um, shopping cart view model. It's not really doing anything. So we could remove these brackets and just leave our view model like this and it would work perfectly fine. 
Um, however, let's actually do something with this uh, order total. So if I add a uh, cupcake to the cart and I check out, I see, thank you for your order. Your total is $5. But if I go back to edit my order and I just check out without adding anything to the cart, it says still, thank you for your order and your total is $0, which is kind of odd because there's nothing in the cart. So um, let's actually make this uh, dynamic so that it displays a, a more appropriate message. So I'm gonna close that down. So I'm actually gonna create a function here that's going to generate the cart message. Okay, and <clears throat> here this is going to say if my order total is actually less than one. Uh, so if we didn't order any cupcakes, then um, it's actually we're going to return the result of all of this. And we're going to say this returns a string. And so here, if, if I didn't order any cupcakes, I'm going to say um, your cart is empty and then otherwise I'm actually going to say thanks for your order your total is um, order total All right, and then <clears throat> I'm gonna call this from our shopping cart. So our total amount text is gonna actually just call that method. That's gonna say view model. Generate cart message. And now let's run that and see what it looks like. So if I add a cupcake, thanks for your order. Your total is five dollars. If I don't add anything, your card is empty. Um, but we still have this label up here that keeps saying "thank you for your order." So let's actually get rid of that real quick. We go here to our shopping cart. We don't want this "thank you for your order" label, which is this here. We can get rid of this. And now I'm going to just update this. And then let's line that to the center and let's add some padding on the sides. It looks a lot better. And now run. And so if I don't add anything to the cart and I just check out, it says your cart is empty. If I go back now and check out, with one cupcake, your order total is $5. Now if I add a ton, my, I've got uh, $611,000 uh, worth of cupcakes. So there you have it. If you learned something and you found this video useful, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Take care.